Today we have another beginner level Divi theme WordPress tutorial. I'm going to be covering the following, how to update some vanilla schema markup. So we wrote the schema ourselves. how to update that. Uh, we're gonna go over some basic stuff such as editing the text and the pi pictures on a Divi themed WordPress website. We're also gonna create a new page and add it to the menu or go through that process because we don't necessarily have a page to actually add right now. Uh, I'm gonna show you where the code snippets go within Divi. We're specifically looking at like talk to, um, that's a chat widget, but this is where like your Bing uh, meta verification would go. Uh, Google Analytics, Google Ads, all those kind of code snippets like that to connect things to your website, where those go. How to update your website, so another very basic how-to and how to write a blog post. So that's what we're doing and we're gonna start from the very beginning. This is the website, we're just on one page of the website, we're on the financial analyst page right here. So to log in, go to wp-admin, and you'll have your username and password. You'll log in, there we go, we have an update. So we'll knock update, update the website. First on the list, uh, themes. So if the theme needed to be updated, that would be the Divi theme, you would update that first, then come to here, check off. If there's multiple, just check the top box, update the plugins, and then it'll update. And then you're gonna wanna go back so you can get to updates right here or right here. And then if WordPress had to update, that would be right here and you'd want to do that last. So start at the bottom, work your way up your updates. We build Divi themed WordPress websites and we do not use a whole lot of plugins. So we don't have to really worry about things breaking and stuff like that. Plus when we host a website, we make three backups a week. So our clients really have no worries about updating things. I suggest you update if you log in and see an update is needed. Um, so that is that. Let's go cover the code snippets real quick. So you come to Divi, come over here to integration, and then here's where we have the Google Analytics tag. This is the head of the website. This is the body. So the talk to said, put it in the body. There it is, and Google Analytics says put it in the head, so there it is, so you just copy and paste your code snippets, come down here and click save, and that's all there is to that. So these are our JavaScripts, noted out by the JavaScript, or the script tags, I'm sorry, and then these this grayed out stuff at the top, these are comments, so these are just for humans to read this and know what it is. So that's why that makes sense when you're reading that and this, you know, the code may not make sense if you can't read code. So we have knocked out, um, we've knocked out the code snippets, updating the website. Let's knock out how to write a blog post real quick. So you're gonna come to posts over here. You're gonna go to add new. And then you'll title your blog post. So this is gonna become the URL slug, what comes after the .com. So keep that in mind when you're writing your blog post, you could can also update that. So we're gonna say my first blog post. And then we'll say, we'll go ahead and use the Divi Builder. It's a Divi website. I suggest is use the Divi Builder. So we'll hop into that and then it's a blog post so potentially you just be building from scratch we'll just put in a one column layout these are all your column layout options right off the bat and then we'll come down and grab a text module so here is where you would write your blog content and stuff like that so if you notice it has a little text editor thing like you might be familiar with a lot of these little icons bullet points numbered lists uh you know where do you want the text align bold so on and so forth so if you wanted this to be headline two uh, because your title is going to be your h1 tag you only want one h1 tag so there's a h2 and say this is text here so on and so forth and this is a list item one item two 
Okay, so to make this a list, we'll click on our bullets. And to bring that into the list, I'll hit delete and then bring it down here. Perfect, headline two. To make this a headline, you can just go headline two. So there you go. So this is the back end view. You see like these blocks, it gets you an idea of how web pages are created, how the, the look and feel goes. But here is probably where you wanna be working in the desktop view is where I prefer to work. When you hover over different things, this is your container, if you will. This is the section, this is the row, and this is the text module that we added to this row. So that's that. Um, yeah, so you can edit this text right in here, or you can click off and click on the gear icon and come in and edit your text here. Uh, you know, you might want to get familiar with everything in here. All the modules have similar layouts and stuff like that. You're gonna have content, design, and advance for every type of module, depending on which type of module it is. This is a text module. These settings will change based on what it is. For example, if we add another module and make it an image module, we'll just grab some random image. Boom, there we go. And now our, you know, these options are slightly different, but we still have the same core tabs. You know, obviously there's no text editor because this is an image module. You know, you have your image here where you could change your image, so on and so forth. So that is the, the concept of the builder and a very brief intro on how to edit stuff. So I guess we just kind of covered how to edit the text and add a picture in the blog post section. If you wanted to edit your slug here, you could come in here and say, you know, my first blog post and get rid of the my. So like I said, it'll just take this and plop it down here with dashes in between all the words. If you want to edit that, just click edit and do that like that. Um, so that's it. So after you write your blog post you want to put your key keyword basically right here so it says focus key phrase this is going to be the main topic of this blog post and then it will give you information on how well you optimize the content on this page to rank for that specific keyword then you also want to adjust this right here so your seo title this is what's going to display in the search results so if we go to some search results and say um job recruiter Cincinnati so your page title is what shows up in blue right here and this is your meta description so keep that in mind when you are creating these right so your website and the page is always going to be right here and then the page title and then the page meta description and that's what you have right here they call it the SEO title and the meta description so you can just take these placeholders out, boom, just highlighted, backspaced, and then you can write in your own title here, and then write in your meta description. And if you notice, as you type, you get these bars. You'll want to get these bars to be green. Uh, orange is saying, hey, they're not long enough. Green is good. Red is too long. And then once you populate your key phrase and all your content, you'll have your SEO analysis to view right here. So, you know, obviously it's all flagged because there's no content or no real content. And then you would go publish your blog post, right? So that's how you would do that. And you would need to create a, a blog page. So, you know, you need to have a blog page to house all your blog posts potentially, but we're not gonna get into that at the moment. Will, when you get to that point, just let me know and I'll help you create the blog page. But I'll just save this as a draft for now so it doesn't end up on the live site and be indexed by Google. So there we go. And that's that. So all that's left on this list is how to update the schema. So we'll go to a page. Uh, we're gonna show you how to create a new page and add it to the menu too. So we'll go to a page and I'm going to one of the job posting pages. It's under finance. It's the financial analysis or analyst position. So you cannot see the schema when you're looking at the live version of the website. 
it is code it is for the search engines to get them more detailed information and stuff like that potentially have the job posting in this scenario show up in Google Jobs so we're on this page we're logged into WordPress we don't have our bar to edit this page right here just click refresh your bar pops up and we're going to go to edit the page so here we go here is the page with the blog post schema or with the job posting schema so if you're kind of looking in here you can kind of see this the the type it's a job posting the title it's financial analyst the description so on and so forth the hiring organization uh, the industry so even though this is code you can kind of look at it and understand what's going on uh, we have responsibilities noted out we have skills we have qualifications education requirements experience requirements okay so pretty thorough schema so what you're going to want to do is basically just grab this this code snippet right here right control c copy it and then you would bring this into the new page you create and you need to adjust everything that needs adjusting right job posting would not need adjusting you're, you're looking for the stuff in between the quotes that needs to be adjusted per that job listing the stuff in front of the colon here or semicolon colon i think it's a colon um the these are like the structure of the schema markup right so you're not going to be editing this word description you're going to be actually editing the description for the new posting that you're making so just make sure you're going in between the right um quote marks and you're not coming down to like the next one because that would definitely mess it up but it's just a matter of coming in here like for example here this is going to stay the same this is going to stay the same this is going to stay the same if this was an accounting position you'd want to change that to accounting if it was not full-time it'd need to go to part-time right uh, job posting date so this is where I have the date set from uh, well this is from last month right so we don't want to leave these like indefinite because Google would be like well how can you just have a job position open forever they're gonna be less likely to show it so we're gonna want to update this to 10 Oh, 01 and then 10 I believe 31 let me make sure yep 10 31 is the last day in October so there we go uh, the image you'll want to well this image can stay this is just the logo um, applicant content that's your name and then here is the URL of this position so you'd copy the page URL that we're on the live URL and put that right here change the salary amount for this position if need be uh, this is just your business information so that'll stay the same and then obviously the responsibilities would change so we're coming down to the end of that all this would be updated with the new responsibilities all this would be updated with the new skills all of this would be updated with the new qualifications so on and so forth right so that's what's going on right there so I'll go ahead and copy this now I will update this page because that is something I need to do um, so I just did the financial analyst and I'll do all of the other ones before I hand this site off to you will so we'll let's say we're going to add a new page right so we're going to create a new position new page and we'll say new financial position and we're going to stick this under so this is your parent page so we want to get that hierarchy in the url structure where, where we have these slashes so we're going to go to job postings finance so new financial position so the top level is going to be finance so we'll say use the divi builder and then we're going to clone an existing page so let's go to let's grab a very similar page financial analyst will work that is a very similar page to what we're going to be creating for this new financial position 
Okay, if you notice, this schema is the same schema we were just looking at because I just brought in the content from that page we were just editing or looking at the schema and editing the schema since we did update it. But essentially now we have the same page as the financial analyst position on this, this page right here. So what you're going to want to do is change this picture right here. So we see this picture. We got hands, uh, tablet, keyboard, stuff like that. And this is going to be a background image. So here we are on the image of the background. And we come in here. And the reason I was saying looking at that image is because I want to get the dimensions. So you're going to want to make a 1920 by 500 image in Canva and then upload that to your website as a JPEG. So 1920 by 500. Photos, say financial. And just to get you an idea, I'm not really going to use this, but so there's that. I have it going from side to side. It's covering the whole width of our 1920 by 500 canvas. We're going to download as a JPEG. You want to download as a JPEG, not a PNG. So it's a smaller file size. It'll make the page load faster. So we'll go to 1920. Well, I'm in my Dropbox where I'm housing everything. Um, fake image or fine financial image we'll put that and uh, we'll come back to our page and we want to swap out that image so we got our new image in there copy this into your alt tag um, right here so you want to give your title a, a good file name so financial image we already had one um, so it put financial image dash one. If there isn't something already uploaded with that name, then it would just be financial image dot JPEG, but there was already one. So it just added a dash one. This is just a fake image anyway, so it doesn't matter, but just copy your title to the alt text or even better yet, write out what the picture is. So this would be hands holding a piggy bank it would be a good alt text description of this image right here. So we'll upload it. And you notice that it has now changed that image. So that's great. Um, you're going to want to come in here and say, you know, new financial position and so on and so forth, right? So I would just update this text where, you know, for a new financial position, whatever the position is, update that and then do it here where the idea is we're getting the keyword a lot at the top of the text and we have it as a headline one on this page. This is going to be a headline two. And then you would put in this information right here about the role, your responsibilities, qualifications, and then apply for change, you know, financial analyst to the new position. And then you would have all of this content right here updated. This right here can just stay the same. This is just the form for them to apply. You're going to want to update this over here where, so we're on the financial analyst page. So we don't have a financial analyst link on this page, but we would want one, right? So you would duplicate that by clicking the duplicate and make this analyst. And then you would update this to the page URL, which I know is analyst. So that's all that's going on there. Since this is an internal link, we do not need uh, anything through .com. So you just start at the slash after .com and it's under Cincinnati Job Postings, Finance, and then Financial Analysts is how you would navigate to that page. Boom. So now we have that link to the other financial analyst position on this page. And this will just stay in the viewport as they scroll up and down the screen. Um, so that's, that's all that minus updating the, the focus key phrase is going to need to be updated or added. You're going to want to change this, uh, title around potentially, 
and then add in your meta description specific to this job posting. And the last thing we have is the schema. So we are using a visual builder. So we're looking at this like the live site. So we don't see the schema right now. Let's go into our block editor so we can see that schemas right here. And this is where you would come in here and you would update this to new financial position and so on and so forth and update all of your schema that needs to be updated. So that's all that. And I'm just going to save this as a draft because I don't want to make this go live. So let's say we really just did create that new financial position. We are going to want to add that to the website menu. And to do that, we're going to hover over appearance and go to menus. And then since we did not publish that page, it's not going to be available in this view. If you notice, this is the most recent tab right here. So it should just be right at the top. If you just made that page, if you don't see it, go to view all and then you'll see all your pages and find it in here. It's going to be, you know, if, if you did put it under finance, it'll be right here in this section right here. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and say add the thank you page to the menu, even though I'm not really, but I'll add it to the menu. And then what you want to do is drag that to the position where you want. And if you notice, they're staggered here. So this is what's creating the um, tiered effect on the menu when you're looking at it on the live site. So job postings like that. So if, if we're following job postings down to finance, financial analyst, and so on, job postings, finance, financial analyst. So there's your hierarchy. That's how it plays out on the live site. Um, and then the last thing would do would be would be to save the menu, which I'm not going to do because we don't want that there. So I'll show you this. We try to leave. It's going to have the save your butt feature. We're just going to leave because we don't want to save that. But that's all that. If you see a little note like this, I don't like having these little icons. So this is just saying something about Arabic. We don't need to worry about that, obviously. So we'll just clear that out. And then I would recommend, it's just good to get in the habit of doing this. We have this WP Opt Optimize is one of the few plugins that we actually use. So we'll just click on it. We'll come in here and see since there's no expired ones, we can uncheck that. We have one here, five here, 27 tables. So let's just go ahead and run this. and It'll just kind of clear out all the junk. Anything extra bloating the site down will be removed. And that's that. So if you ever need to add a user, you can do so here. This is me. Um, I can edit that. But these are my employees. This is you. Uh, so you have administrative access so you can do anything and everything to this site. So j please just be careful as you're working on stuff. If you have any questions, just ask me. Um, but yeah, that's it. So you can view all your pages right here. So there's all your pages. Your media is going to be potentially just images but you could put pdfs in here you could put videos in here whatever type of media you want on your site or to be able to be downloaded off your site um, when you start posting you could have the ability to get comments so since there is no way for somebody to leave a comment right now there's nothing in here uh, you're not going to really do anything in appearance as far as the themes just leave the divi theme um, widgets we don't use widgets uh, menus we went over menus so if you needed to add a plugin you can add a new plugin a word of caution adding plugins make sure it is a you know a well-respected plugin downloaded a bunch of times high rating all that kind of stuff because all plugins are not good and honestly you just want to use as few plugins as you can it'd be much better to code stuff out and stuff like that uh, you'll probably never need to hop in tools. There's probably not much for you to do in settings. Um, yeah, there's 
probably nothing. I mean, everything that's needed to be done has been done. Um, if you're new to WordPress, uncheck this box. This is just so silly to leave this checked. Uh, when you add your blog post, we're potentially going to want to note that out as the post page. WordPress calls uh, blogs posts. So that's that. Um, your blog post will be separated from your pages. So you're going to view pages here, posts here. Um, as far as the search engines are concerned, posts and pages, they don't care. They view them the same. But by writing your blog post as blog post, then they'll just automatically go into all your blog, your blog page. And that will just be a nice kind of automated system. And that will actually utilize a sidebar. So in appearance, widgets is what end up in the sidebar or potentially the footer, but we don't do our footer that way. Um, Yoast is all set up. So nothing uh, really for you more to do in Yoast, except for when you create your Facebook page or any other ones, you want to add the URL for that page right here. And then that's really it. So hopefully that got you somewhat up to speed on how to do all of these kind of basic things to your website. Of course, if you have any questions, just ask me if you're just watching this video, learning about the Divi theme, please leave a comment and I will get back with you as fast as I possibly can. If you like the content, please hit that subscribe button and smash the like button. And yeah, feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to um, you know, give you my two cents on whatever you have to say. And that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.